Okay, a few days ago, um, John from UK, Oxonian, uh, offered me to test drive this uh, interesting pen. It is a Swan 450. I know very little about uh, this company, and uh, actually, it's not of my interest uh, in terms of collecting, but I have a weak spot for. Um, flex nibs and uh, when he said that he has an interesting nib I could not say no okay so this is the uh, the pen uh, the nib the most important part actually it looks like it has a, a metallic overfeed and a, plus a rubber underfeed uh, you might be able to see a very strange contraption in terms of feed um, it looks like a there is a uh, metallic, probably metallic tube that comes out through the middle of the feed, and uh, I'm not I'm not even sure how it works. I don't know exactly where the ink comes from. I need to really look at the old patterns and have an idea of what's going on. But anyway, after a few days of trying and cleaning it, it looks like it's working. So pff, let's see how it does. So usually the first thing that I do with uh, such a nib is I try to make something interesting. And you can see the type of problem that we have here. In this case the feed was not wet enough to be able to uh, follow the line and at this point the uh, film broke and instead of having a continuous line uh, I have a uh, a broken line. Probably this is because I had it open for a while so it evaporated so maybe I need to prime it a little bit before I, I start writing. So let's give it one more try and uh, wow if uh, there is an example of uh, a wet noodler <laughs> a wet noodle this is what it is it starts from a relatively fine line of almost half a millimeter or less and it keeps going and going and going and nothing stops the energizer I think at this point up here the uh, line is almost like uh, maybe three millimeters something like that or maybe more as you can see when I was writing the, uh, the thick lines I was going a little bit slower just trying to avoid this kind of problems uh, where the line breaks. So let's give it a little bit more try. Wow. And the, the, the kind of force that it takes is actually absolutely minimal. So we have uh, a real wet noodle here. Oops. Let's give it a little bit more spin. Not bad, not bad. Quite, quite nice. And uh, as you'll see, the, the most impressive part of this pen is actually the uh, contrast of the thin line with the thick line. This is actually exactly the way it should be. I need to move the paper a little bit more so that I can see ah, panic. Um, what's going on. I have a very very professional setup right here. I cannot believe how it works. Mm, let's see. And let's give it a little bit more try. Maybe a little bit more to the left. Good. So now the next thing that I like to 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 try is actually the uh, quick returns, and I'll tell you what I mean by quick returns. This is when, oops, same problem. Uh, let's prime it a little bit. Okay. When I make these very very thick upstrokes, I want to make sure that when I return, I get a very fine return. I go from a lot of ink here to a very 
small amount of ink here, a very thin line. And this is actually a characteristic of a very, very good flex nib. If I had something like this, where this area is flooded, then that would be a terrible thing. But instead, here I get an awesome, 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 awesome kind of return. Uh, and you will see that by doing this, you can really, really work miracles. I will stop talking and let you enjoy this. I am definitely enjoying it myself, much more than by just looking at it. I love this new. Ah, too fast. And I think I messed up the letters. Yeah, that's right. Nice. Nice, very nice. Okay, let's move a little bit more over. Hmm. I mean, it's not perfect. When you write with a flex nib, you really need to be a little bit more careful. If you try fast, well, I mean, you can see that actually, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I can definitely see it here, that the uh, thick line that I get is not very wet. And usually, when this is the case, then that means that the supply of the ink to the nib is mm, moderate. So if I do something like this, I will definitely starve the nib from ink. So I have to go a little bit more slower and I should be able to get things going uh, the right way. I mean, the idea is that if you write with a flex nib and you want to produce nice effect, uh, you shouldn't go fast. I mean, if you have a pen that does it, that's great. But if, if it doesn't, then you need to work it in, in such a way that it produces the best result. And in some cases this means that you have to slow down. And also I'm not sure, oops, I'm not sure if you can see it, but actually in order to show this beautiful effect, you really need to write relatively large letters. Uh, the rule of thumb is actually that these, the thick part, should be about five times, maybe four or five times the height. So the best letter here would be something maybe as big as this. I'm not sure if you can realize how large is this letter. So. This is the nib and that's the letter, but it shows a nice proportion between height and thickness. Uh, if you try to write something like this, it's fat and blobby. It's, I'm not saying that it's not good, but it's definitely not proportionally correct. It looks chubby. Under certain contexts, this may be acceptable and, and not acceptable, but I mean, it may produce the right result, but if you want a nice, uh, typical, conservative, maybe, uh, script with the right proportions, then you have to write a long letter like this. <laughs> 